Hello, welcome to my channel, I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on TNA Impact Wrestling, 20th of April 2017. Before we start this episode, I want to moan at Impact. Uh, as you know, I have the Impact Wrestling app to watch Impact, and they decided, without announcing, that instead of uploading it on the day it goes out in America like they promised, it now comes out a week later. So, I went onto the app tonight, expecting Impact Wrestling... And it turns out it's not coming out till next week. So it took me nearly an hour of faffing around, getting a link to Pop TV, the American set, so I could watch it. So I am not impressed. I'm tempted to cancel the app. We'll have to see where we go. But Impact Wrestling coverage will go as normal, apart from Victory Road, because I completely missed that and I don't see the point of doing it seven days on. Alright, let's just get straight to the show. I did miss quite a lot of this, so I'll let you know when I actually started watching. Uh, but anyway, the show opened with a graphic paying tribute to the late Matt Rosie Anoa'i, which was very nice. Uh, then we see JR, JB, not JR, I wish it was JR, JB and the Pope on the announce table. Then they take us to our first match, uh, World Tag Team Champions LAX versus Joe Coleman. And Jake Holmes. Santana catches Holmes with an ace crusher. And then they hit the cannibal in motion. Followed by a street sweeper for the win. That was... I get... It sounds good. But obviously I didn't watch it. So... Hmm. Uh, then Conan says... He is seriously like a late period. And it's time to take the power out of the hands of the good old boys. He introduces his entire crew and forms a set. Diamond... Diamonte checks hose, but is interrupted by Decay. He starts brawl. They start brawling the entranceway, and the fight spills into the ring where Abyss lays out Orters and Homicide before Santana hit nails him with a missile dropkick. Crazy Steve gets in the ring, works Santana over while Conan sneaks behind and nails Steve. They go to a commercial. After that, we come back. Karen Jarrett comes in the ring, says they've made a lot of changes since the ownership changed. She's happy to announce that Impact Wrestling and Global Force Wrestling have merged. The fans seemed happy about that. And thank you, chanted, thank you, Karen. Uh, she mentioned this is going to be the Night of Champions. They run out of the title matches. Then Sanjay Dodd, of all people, comes to the ring, gives Karen a big hug and says, it feels great to be back in the Impact Zone. He reintroduced himself, talks about how he helped the X Division being built, then suggested making the X Division title match the main event and then added himself to it. He came here on his own dime to do what he never did by winning the X Division title. Andrew Everett comes out to the ring and says, He respects what Sanjay has done, but he fought, uh, has fought through Gregory, Shane Helms, Gauntlet, and he alone deserves a title shot. Before we get any further, yeah, the X Division shit now. Sanjay, please help it. It's a spot fest. It's really shit. I used to love the X Division, but it's just died on its arse, so please fix it. Please, please, please. Um, Helms and Trevor Lee come out, and he says that the guy to talk about the X Division, Helms runs both opponents down and says if Dudge was here for all those years, never won the title, probably never will. Bruce Pitchcock finally comes out. Tells Holmes that he doesn't want anything around here. And if he can speak on behalf of Dutch Mantel and Karen. Uh, we'll get a little crazy since we're live tonight. He likes Tonjo's idea so much that he's making this a six-way match. Involving three men in the ring and three more to be started later. Holmes and Lee decide to attack Everett and Dud. But Everett and Dud lay out Lee. And then Helms heads for the hills. Everett and Dud grab the X Division title. And then play took a war with it. Uh, sounds like a good segment. And then Anthony Mayweather, we used to know McCrimson, tells a story about him never knowing his father and having a tough upbringing. Now he's the father who realises he needs to be a better man. And that, and there for him, instead of partying in Cleveland and winding up like his friends who are in jail or dead, that decision led him to enlist in the military. Okay. Then we had a knockout title match, Rosemary versus ODB. One dirty bitch. Uh, ODB gets a two count off a Dez press, but a Bronco Buster attempt lands her right at Rosemary's boot. Red Wedding, and that's it for that one. Rosemary retains. 
I watched the ending of the match and it was alright. Obviously, I only saw the red wedding, so can't really comment on that much. Then we see uh, Borash and Pope at the commentary table, and then, then it shows us Hornswoggle or Swoggle running around the crowd. Borash tells us that Alex will defend the world tag team titles against Takana Street Fighter next week. That sounds interesting. Then Mackenzie's waiting around the uh, door of the management office and asks Bruce Pitchgod and Karen Jarrett who the rest of the petition of the X Division match will be. Pitchgod admits to suicide, then he said we'll have to wait to meet the rest. Sienna comes in and says that with all the Global Force wrestlers running around the locker room, she hasn't seen the Global Force wrestler women's champion. Karen said she'll be here and she better be ready. Uh, that was good, and then we go to Chris Silvo versus Congo Kong. Kong hammers Silvo and hip tops him play across the ring. Silvo tries to unload punches, but Kong hits a running splash by belly to, then a belly to belly. Kong kicks the running cannonball into the corner, and then drags Silvo out to the middle of the ring before going to the top rope for a frog splash. Uh, he did like convulsing, like he'd been crushed. When he was doing the pin, it was really good. I enjoyed that. So, let's see where that goes. And then James Storm is backstage drinking a beer. Uh, should he be drinking before World Title Match? Yes. Yes, he should. That's what's in the notes. Thank you, PW Insider person. Then says that Lashley should be scared of losing the World Title to James Storm. He's been waiting a long time to become World Champion again. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that. Sorry about that. Alberto Albertan joins us from a remote location. He says he wants to face whoever wins the World Title match tonight, and he hopes it's Bobby Lashley. Then we go backstage. Mackenzie, who's with the World Champion Magnus, the Global Force Wrestling World Champion, not the TNA World Champion, came back to help out. An, he said he came back to help out an old friend, and then he heard about Albert. Albertron. I think he's the number one contender for the world title. He wants to know what Alberto has done since he came here. It doesn't matter what he has done elsewhere. He goes back to the back of the line. And his world championship means that he goes to the front of the line. He leaves to watch the match and learn who's challenging. Then we have Bobby Lashley versus James Storm. Uh, at one point the referee gets knocked out. A chair gets involved. Um... Storm hits two last goal super kicks made to cover no referee. Storm sees the chair, kicks it out of the ring, uh, goes to grab the beer, gets in the ring with it. EC3 comes down, grabs the bottle, smashes it in Storm's face. Storm goes limp. EC3 gives a oh well look to the camera. Casually strolls off as Lashley hits the spear and covers. Uh, great angle. I love seeing heel EC3. I cannot wait to see where you go with this. I think it'll be good. Let's go with it. Uh, then Mackenzie catches Nutch Mantel coming out of the management office and gets him to admit that the fifth member is someone named Desmond Xavier, but he isn't budging on the last man in the match. Uh, then we see footage from Border City Wrestling of Chris Adonis attacking Moose and putting him in the Adonis lock and then holding up the Grand Championship. Mackenzie is backstage with Moose, who says the title has brought him a lot of new enemies. He hasn't forgot what Adonis did to him in Canada and Mexico. He wants to challenge Adonis for next week. Adonis comes in with his ominous sling and accuses Moose of attacking him. He won't be ready to challenge Moose next week, but he knows who he is. Davy Richards runs in, lays Moose out, and Langeline says it looks like Moose just made another enemy. That was really good. I can't wait to see what happens. Maybe Chris Adonis is going to get involved with them. So that will be really good. And then we go to our main event of the evening. Uh, title match for the X Division Championship. We have Trevor Lee, Sanjay Dudd, Suicide, Andrew Everett, Desmond Xavier. And the returning low key. He now wrestles in a suit. Uh, they did an amazing spot where they all drop kicked into the ring where nobody was. It was really funny. Uh, uh, they finish Everett and Desmond and Lee. Uh, oh, sorry. Lee comes in and hits a nasty reverse Frankensteiner. Goes to the top. Loki with a spinning kick to his head and then hits a warrior's way on Lee to get the three count. Um, 
yeah. Uh, if you don't know what the Warriors way is, it is basically the coup de grace. But he's been doing it for absolutely years, since like 2002, on before that. Uh, great match. I can't believe Loki is the world champ, the world X division champion. Can't wait to see what he can do with the division now. So that's good. And then we go to the broadcast booth where Josh Matthews has remained since the world title match. Sorry, I forgot to mention that he came out during the world title match. Back onto commentary. Uh, he runs down the Pope and eventually Pope just says, Go to hell, leaves. Uh, then Josh and um, Jeremy have an argument. He's like, You're not going to punch me, are you? He went, You don't think I'm going to punch you? And then guess what he does? He punches him straight in the mouth. <laughs> it was great. Jeremy Borash knocked Josh Matthews the fuck out. Well, no, to punch him in the mouth, but you know what I mean. It was that damn good. I can't believe it. It was so good I had to change my underwear after. Sorry, that's gross. Not really. That was a line from the Scrubs. From Scrubs. But yeah, that was a really good impact, to be fair. I can't wait to see what they do next week. Now, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to see more content, and I'll catch you.